Hi guys, Todd here with Great Escape Farms. I'm here to give you some lessons learned on my rainwater harvesting system here. So I have a kind of like a table of contents here, if you would, uh, of the video sections or video pieces I'm going to show you. I also am going to cover a few things that I don't have videos on, so I'll just talk about those real quick here. I don't actually have pictures or video of that. So the first thing is how to properly uh, bend downspouts. So when I first did this at my father-in-law's place, I was bending downspouts all over the darn place in the center and everywhere else. I saw a YouTube video in between doing his place and my place where you actually bend the downspouts in the corners and it is much, much simpler. So I have a kind of a how-to section on how to do that. Next is uh, sizing of the first flush drainage holes. So on my father-in-law's place, I had the holes too big and it was letting the water out too fast. And then on my place, the, I had the holes too small and it was clogging the holes up. So I kind of need to adjust and find a happy medium there. So I have uh, two videos on that. Next is moving water away from structures. So the first flush system has an automatic drainage to reset itself after it stops raining. And mine was just kind of dumping on the cement right next to the garage. Well, the cement was perfectly level and that kind of made a big puddle, which went under the uh, walls of the garage and into the garage. So I have since added a hose and ran it away from that particular area. Next item I'm going to talk about is using extra glue on the first flush system. So at my father-in-law's place, I when I use glue PVC together, I prime both pieces that are going in together and then usually I just put glue on the pipe piece itself or the piece that's on the outside. That way it pushes the glue up. It usually still makes a good seal because generally PVC is tight. The first flush system is a little looser than that and it's not all that tight. Unfortunately, in my father-in-law system, I only put the glue on one side and it ended up leaking in that seam. So what I did on mine is I put the glue on both the, uh, the joint, if you will, as well as on the pipe itself. I did it on both pieces and that held on both of my systems. So the only fix for that once you put BVC glue on is to basically order a whole new system and just uh, I'll cut the pipe and replace that where it is. So uh, kind of a, an expensive mistake there because I think it was $36 or something like that, which is just a senseless mistake. So uh, I've learned from that and I uh, paid the price and we'll move on from here, but hopefully you guys can learn from that and not make that same mistake yourself. Uh, the last item that I actually have a video for is to design an overflow mechanism for your system. I did not design one for my father-in-law's system, I did for mine. So with his system, we've had a good bit of rain lately, it did overflow and it was dumping water all around his garage. So we went in and we added an overflow system and we run, ran the water away from the garage. So I have a, a video showing you how we implemented that on a single IBC tote system. Mine is a four IBC tote system, so I had mine designed in. You can see how that operated. The One of the issues that I had that I don't have a video for was the color of the tote. My totes are kind of a clear, between a clear and a white color and it was pointed out by a reader on the blog that over time as the summer goes on it gets hot with heat and the sun on it we're going to end up with uh, algae and stuff growing in there and that's going to cause issues and clog up our system uh, and I, I knew this I just didn't actually implement it myself but uh, the totes should be painted either black or put some kind of a black uh, tarp or something around it. So we, I, I have not implemented that yet. That is something that I do need to implement here and I, I will get with my father-in-law and figure out the best way to tackle that a little later on this summer. For next year, I'll do it right. Uh, once they're drained over the winter, I'll go ahead and I'll paint them. That would probably be the easiest thing. The last thing is on my system, I have Four IBC totes. Two of them have the downspouts coming in them, so I don't have caps on. I just have screen over. The other two I had the black caps on, on the top, and I'm tied together on the bottom with two-inch PVC. What I did to allow water to go so I didn't have pressure buildup is I just took a pair of... Uh, scissors and I poked a hole in a, a mechanism 
meant to allow pressure to bleed in and out. And that will be fine when I'm getting slow water coming into the system uh, during a rain system, during a normal rain. Where I'm gonna run into issues is if I pump a lot of water out of that quickly, now that I have the hoses and everything hooked up, I can create a good bit of pressure, back pressure, on the totes that have the caps on. So I need to put in a bigger hole on that yet. I haven't done it yet. I'll probably drill it out or do something like that, but you definitely need to think about that because you don't want to build a bunch of pressure up. So that's it. Let me get into the actual videos here. I hope you guys enjoy this. Please let me know. I, I see a lot of people watching the videos and everything. I have had a couple of comments. I do appreciate those. Please give me feedback, comments, anything that you've heard, lessons learned, or just say, hey, you like the videos. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Counting up. Okay. Hey guys, it's Todd here. Uh, working on gutters again and uh, rain catchment system. So one of the things I had an issue with last week was the gutter material itself. And as you can see, one, both of these are the same size. Obviously you get that when you make a cut. So you want one side to go in the other. Basically you want the side coming from the water to go inside of the other one. Uh, and the way to do that, previously I was taking a pair of needle nose and I was bending in the center and doing all kinds of stuff. But I saw something on YouTube last week that makes it much easier is you take, go to each corner and you bend it in like that. So let me come to this side, bend it in, bend it in, 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 and in. Bend that down a little bit. So now that will allow me to put this piece in and you still have to maneuver it in a little bit but it fits in. So water flowing in this direction will go right in. If it was water was flowing in the other direction, it would, on the top or the bottom, it would be coming out of the seam. So that's why the water, the flow of direction you want going into the other side. Okay, this is my father-in-law system here. Let me back up and get a better view of this. You can see it's only uh, about half full. Uh, and one of the reasons is we had an inch of rain overnight. Now I haven't calculated his uh, square footage here, but one of the issues I know is right down here. You see the water is just coming out of the first flush system shooting out there. So that is letting out too much. I put the largest hole possible in here and uh, so that it wouldn't clog up and what I think I want to do is go to the smallest hole and just that little bit of leaking there over a multi-hour rain equals many many gallons of water so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put a smaller one in again I don't want to mess with that now because with there's a good bit of weight in this tube right here so I'll wait until it drains out after this rain event put a smaller one in and then he should fill up a little faster so the problem with this system is my first flush, the uh, part that makes it automatic, the little washer at the bottom, appears to be clogged up on both of my systems. So this system right here, I don't have any water leaking out the way it should. And the same thing on the other side. So that hose comes through and connects up to the bottom here. So I had this issue yesterday where this side was working and the other side was clogged. I ended up, uh, I needed to take it off to, I took the nipple off to measure the, for the size of hose so that we could add the hose. So I ended up cleaning it up then, but now they're both clogged. So apparently I have pollen or something, very, very fine granular, but it's enough to clog the system up. So what I need to do is just take this little black piece off right here, this little nipple, and inside of that nipple is the little washer that has the little pinhole in it. And I need to put in a system or a, a larger washer for pinholes. So they said start small and adjust up. So I don't want to do it right now because right now this pipe is full. So I don't want to get washed out with about, uh, I guess, probably eight to ten gallons of water coming down on me. I had did that yesterday when I took the black one off. Uh, we are definitely raining right now. I'm filling up. Everything else on the system is working right. 
So after it rains or after it stops raining, I'll go ahead and remove that nipple and put on a smaller washer. As far as this system right here, uh, we are sprinkling a little bit right now and you can see I have a, a good amount of water coming through there right now. So I'm really, really impressed with these systems and how much water they're gathering. You can see right there, I'm over halfway on these tanks. And if it continues to rain like this for another two or three hours, I could actually fill these tanks up. So very impressed with how much water you get in one rainfall on a roof the size of mine here. So one other issue that I had here is the water was coming out of the first flush system there. It was hitting the uh, cement. The cement is perfectly level, so that means that it was going in all different directions. And if you notice, I had the garage that's sitting on the cement. So what I ended up with is water inside the garage. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is get <clears throat> a pipe or a little plastic hose to connect up to the first flush system and run the water off somewhere. That's actually what the little nipple is there for. I just didn't think to do it before I hooked it all up. Um, also, once everything's dry, I'm going to come back. I'm going to put a bead of caulk, something that is compatible with both uh, steel garage and concrete, and put a bead of caulk on the bottom here so I don't have any water coming in here. So uh, I, I have the issue on this side. I do not have the issue on this side. Well, I do have a little bit of water coming in there, nothing like I do on the other side, but this is the side that's clogged up and not working. So once I do get it working, I would more than likely have the same issue. So that's it for the moment. Okay, here's one of the issues that we came across is the first flush system, the bottom piece here itself. When it connects up, it's a lot looser than most PVC is. So because of, I just I, I put on the primer and then I put on the uh, one swab of the glue and I pushed it on and left it at that. And apparently it wasn't enough. So uh, the fix that I did for mine, which seems to be holding a little better, is I did two swabs of glue. I pushed it on and I gave a twist once it was on just to make sure that I had glue all the way around. As you can see with this, well, I hope you can see it with this one, it's just bleeding through right here. So we added this tape on because it was leaking a lot more, but it's still just bleeding right through the tape right here. So the fix is going to have to be to order another one of these systems, cut up here, put a union in, and basically rebuild the bottom and put it together right. Because although it's glued and it's leaking, it's still glued and there's no way I can get it apart and re-glue it. So. Unfortunately, it's going to have to go that way. Other than that, everything seems to be working fine. We have the uh, tube in here. You can see right there, the first flush tube is letting out water. Uh, that's a good bit of water coming out there. I may go ahead and uh, put a smaller hole washer in this one. Mine is too small and it's clogging up. But the rest of it is filled up. You can see up here, uh, we have water coming in. It is catching stuff and preventing it from going, preventing crap from going into the tank itself. I know we're filled up because I can hear water going into the tank here. Let's see if you can hear that. And then if I lift it up, well, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can see a little bit of water running through there. So. System is working. We are uh, about a half full or maybe a little bit over half full here. So I uh, still need to fix that one issue, but other than that, the system is working well. So this is one of the mistakes I made is I didn't have a way to get the excess water off. As you can see, or actually you probably can't tell, the water level is right up to here. And basically what it does is it's basically leaking right out of the top and it's just letting off all in this area right down around the garage. So what we want to do is put in an overflow mechanism here so that we can divert any excess water away from the garage and so we don't end up with flooding issues or wash away or any, any other issues that will be associated with a lot of water hanging around here. So I need to see if I can get this connector off and then we'll add it right in there and I'll do a quick video after we get this put together. Okay guys, so we got our fix in here. This is, actually let me step back a little further. This is what it looks like from back here. And we got the black hose going over, so let me explain what we did here. Uh, what we did is we added, we took off the screw that initially just had the valve on it, and we added a T in here. 
and then we put the faucet back on the T comes up and we did just a uh, two nineties with a pipe in between and the water will get to this level right here, which uh, you can kind of see it right there. So it, it will get to that level. We put a couple of holes on top so that we didn't create a siphon and suck it out too much. And then it goes down and there's 90 going off across here. And the white pipe comes out to about here where the block is. And then this black tube here has holes so it will kind of release it as it goes along. If we get a whole bunch, it's going to drop it off over there. And the reason that we did it the way we did it is so that my father-in-law can remove the white or the black pipe and just leave the white there. And that way he can mow back in this area or if we need to drive because we do have kind of a pathway back here for taking some uh, excess brush and stuff into the back. One screw up I did make while we were doing this is we can't open 100% here. So it's not going to matter just with a three quarter inch valve here. But uh, when we're emptying this thing uh, to winterize it, because we'll have to empty the tank, it will take a little bit longer to empty it out. So uh, screw up on my part. What I should have done was just put in a coupling here, come out another, probably only needed another inch, inch and a half to allow that to open up all the way. But it is functional as it is, and that will solve the problem of us overflowing, and it will get all the water away from the garage. So let me step back and give you a full view again.